Brandon, since we haven't talked to you uh, since the end of spring, when you, when you guys met as a staff about the offense, what was the overall evaluation? What did you think you guys accomplished in the last 15 days? You did a good job competing. You did a great job uh, of trying to play the game uh, as much as possible, uh, unscripted, uh, more alive period, not tackled, but really put guys in position to, uh, to grow and learn and to experience you know, what it's like on a Saturday, you know, it's minimal on what it really is. Uh, but I think we did a pretty good job installing, putting uh, guys in position to make plays, uh, and also new guys uh, to put their best foot forward. That whole combination, I thought was a good one. Well you use the spring, even through this as a player, do you want to have a depth chart that's in your mind by the end of spring, or do you all approach this as like, Nothing that's going to be settled until August. No, I would say coming through spring, uh, you want to get an idea of the people you want to be able to start relying on. You want to identify uh, points where maybe things need to improve. Uh, you want to, again, start outlining guys you're going to count on in the fall and then pre you know continue to develop them through summer. Uh, identify individually and offensively things that we need to improve on, but also things that we do well. At the end of the day, coming out of spring, you want to start having an identity, and, uh, and, and putting those guys in position to create that identity is really important. Are you excited about that? How are you feeling? Good. Is that an injury and everything good? We're good. We're we'll playing a game right now. <laughs> Is there anything that you can say about what happened that night? Uh, you know, what your house was doing? No, there's nothing I can really say. All I would say is that in hindsight, I probably would have rather went to, went to bed instead of uh, running the side by side, but uh, that's about all I'd say. Yeah, I mean, how, how, do you feel like you dodged one maybe a little bit there? Could have been a little worse? It's always going to be worse. Again, yeah, there's nothing else to talk about. Uh, having uh, Joe Philbin join, how, how beneficial could that be? Do you have a history with him? Yeah. Having Joe's been great. I think the perspective he gives, the, the uh, wealth of knowledge that he has uh, as a position coach, head coach, football coach. I mean, uh, I think everyone in the building can learn something from him. And uh, he really, uh, it's really awesome. I mean, to, to be. To say it's not, you know, a little, you know, pretty cool in my my perspective uh, to see be around Coach Coach Philbin again in a different light, in a different way, uh, would be an understatement. So, very happy he's here. Uh, he's a great addition to our staff. How much do you think you'll lead on him? Because you're a first time coordinator, obviously, and he's he's done at the highest level. Yeah, I mean, I think we're surrounded by guys in the building that have done it at the highest level and have done it really well. Now, uh, I'm going to lean on everyone in the room, Coach Day and Coach Fry and Coach, you know, Coach Dennis and Coach Bailey and, and so on and so forth, Coach Alford. But, I mean, uh, he's definitely a great addition, and he'll bring something to the room that, uh, uh, that will help us. Brad, how do you, how do you, how are those meetings? I know we're asking you all the time, but is it free to speak? I mean, you know what I mean? How would you describe our offensive meetings? Yeah, I mean, how would you describe when y'all are getting together and you're either brainstorming or whatever? Is it everybody free to speak their mind? I mean, how does that, how does that work in your brain? Uh, yeah, you encourage dialogue. You encourage ideas. Sometimes the idea that comes out is not the right idea, but it then sparks another conversation, and eventually you find yourself down a road where it's a good conversation. Uh, I would ever, I would hate to have ever have a room. Where people are nervous and scared to speak. Now you want to make sure you know, you know what you're talking about or those yeah. kind of things. But uh, and that, that encourages that. But I think the more dialogue you can have with uh, the kind of caliber of coaches we have in our room, it's always a good thing. And so, with like a coach Philbin, are you personally looking for insights from what you know he's observed? You know, maybe in practice. I mean, how, how does that work? How does, what's the interaction? Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Or, you know, in time, yeah. in where he's been, you know, Super Sure, Bowl I mean, I would say, you know, I'm, he's not just blurting out all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's he's waiting to be maybe called upon or pulled aside or whatever. But I'm sure if there's a thing that he believes strongly in, he'd be willing to voice his opinion. Uh, again, all opinions are, are, uh, are welcomed. Uh, I would just say that uh, he's not in there trying to 
overtake the room. He is very uh, respectful of everyone that's in there. And as much as we're learning from him, I know he's trying to learn from us. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's you know a pretty normal situation. Yeah. Brian, with the crash, did you bring that up with the team? Uh, addressed. No, but I think anything addressed or anything that we do will be kept in house. Did it? Did that episode change you? I mean, people have experiences that that change them. Uh, did, I mean, did, you know, I'm not. You don't know have asked in there. I mean, did, yeah, are I mean, you kind of a different guy since then? Or how would you explain it? it uh, you know, everything provides a learning opportunity, yeah. and uh, I would say it's a learning opportunity. I'm not going to talk about the situation or anything. Remember when I asked you when you were a player and I said, uh, were you one of those guys who for five years old went off the high board? Uh, oh yeah, it's probably right. you said yes. It's yeah. probably right. Yeah. Five years old trying but, to come off the high dot. But yeah, but I'm not talking about specifics of that situation, but, but you, as you go through life, you feel yourself mellowing a little bit? I mean, do you feel yourself uh, personally mellowing a little? You know what I mean? You know, yeah, you have to. Your body doesn't operate the same way as it used to when you were younger. Yeah, yeah. But but I guess what I'm getting to is when you come back close to like maybe something serious happening to you, which an injury is still serious, but does it does it make you step back and, you know? I'm healthy. Yeah. But you want to stay healthy, right? Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. that's the goal. Lorenzo was a guy, obviously, you guys looked at him before he was Notre Dame. Now he's back here. What makes it about him that he's able to switch to the defensive side? And obviously, he's great on offense. He was a great athlete, you know, always was in high school. Uh, you know, I thought he was a heck of a player. Uh, you know, I, again, I want to speak on for him, but, you know, I felt like, you know, coming out of high school, he was a good athlete. I felt like I may have told him I thought his best position was corner. Uh, so, you know, I know it's always tough finding the path and, and believing on what you want to do and then maybe switching. And I, you know, I can only guess how hard that would be. Uh, but I'm really excited he's back. As an individual, as a person, uh, he's awesome. So to add more and more people like that to our locker room uh, is only a bonus for us. What does he gain from having spent two years there receiving uh, I don't know. I mean, that's probably a good question for him. Uh, but you'd like to think that he probably maybe some tricks of the trade from a receiver standpoint, and then the things he was trying not to give away. Maybe as a DB, he's trying to pick up on, uh, and then that allows him to, you know, cut the corners in, in, in his new job description. That's sort of the upside of the transfer portal, isn't it? A guy who maybe second guesses what the first decision he made, like Taiwan Malone, you know, y'all were after him pretty hard, and now all of a sudden he's back in Ohio State. Yep. Is that is that an upside, to, I guess, to the trust reporter, that you can fix something that maybe you... I think that any time you're able to provide more power to the player, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, it's their responsibility to use the power the right way uh, and in the right light. Yeah. But I think any time the players are with that with the power, um, it's better off for the sport. When the transfer portal, sorry, yep. obviously you guys had a couple guys leave over the course of the spring, and when you're stacking up talent, that's almost, I guess, in this day and age, it's an inevitable conclusion maybe there. Did you expect that to happen that quickly? Did you start losing guys from that, that second year class? Well, I guess I didn't really have any expectations. I was just, you know, hopeful to uh, continue to build and shape the room as best we can. Uh, I completely understand all the pressures that everyone has. And, uh, and frankly, um, you know, what they feel is right is up to them. Uh, but it is just tough, man. I mean, I think at the end of the day, they're just trying, they, they feel like they have a four to five year window, and they're just trying to give themselves the best chance. Is the room being as highly competitive as it is, are you seeing that show up on the field and it's supposed to be hanging out with every quarter who's with the customer? As far as what? Pushing their talent up, pushing oh yeah, their I mean, typically the more talent you have, the more you're demanding of the player, and then the more you demand the player, the more of the uh, growth you're probably going to get for for each individual. So um, the goal is to continue to add the best players in the country to the room to allow to push those that are currently there and those that are coming. So it's always the goal. That's what we're going to try to do.
Orlando went through 15 practices in the spring. Now he had Tiger Flat and Del Mars. How comfortable do you feel right now? I feel pretty comfortable. I'm not not to the point where I'm going to relax. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I take that back. I don't know if you're ever comfortable. I think that uh, I, I'm very honored to be in the role I'm in, and I'm not taking it lightly. Uh, but I would never say I'm, I guess I'm comfortable. I, 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 like, I like the path we're on. I like the work that's being put in, and I'm excited to watch these guys work and apply. Uh, through summer, um, I would say. Yeah. Where does it stand in terms of the right following? I don't know if they're going to decide or use the rules of this whole area. Coach Jared would handle any of those kind of questions, not me. To go back uh, to, to filming, um, yeah. you know, like, last few years you guys met Kevin Wilson in that room, and he had, I think, a certain role, right, in terms of, especially when it came to the run game. Do you, you see Joe kind of inheriting some of that, kind of that elder statesman as it relates to? Uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. We'll see how it all shakes out. I'm sure uh, Coach Fry, you know, will uh, uh, use you know, every asset he has around him. And obviously, Joe would be a good asset. Uh, exactly how everything lies right now. I mean, I know uh, really uh, Coach Fry's got a good handle of that run game, and, uh, and we'll let it grow from there. But I'd rely a lot and very heavily uh, on Coach Fry. Coming out of spring, the, uh, you may have already been asked this for a while, but I've been here almost since the start. Your number one quarterback is? Uh, what? <laughs> You're, I said coming out of spring, hit it in the summer, your number one quarterback is? What do you mean? Number, who's your number one quarterback? Who's your quarterback? Or competing? Right? Or I mean, competing. Okay. Oh, no, I'm just trying to ask competing. you. Competing. I was trying to ask you a straight up question. Just ask, just ask who's the starting I quarterback. I did. I said, who's your starting quarterback? I asked him. So <laughs> where was I, I actually said number one, not starting. Yeah. Uh, what did you see out of those, both of those guys that buoys you headed into the summer and then preseason camp that tells you? I would just say the way they work, you know, the uh, not just the allotted time that we are given. They work outside those lines as far as on their own and with the guys. Both guys spend a lot of time that way. Um, the way they compete, the way they still, you know, give each other pointers, the way they do everything, frankly, uh, is very encouraging. And uh, the competition's only going to drive both of them. So all of those reasons are why I'm very confident in, uh, in the end process. You know, I know, I was talking about De Devin has a has a quarterback, you know, coach guy, you know, that that gives him pointers and stuff other than in this building, you know, from his past and stuff. Where, what is your stance on that kind of stuff, Brian? I mean, do you like that? I mean, yeah, that's what they want. Yeah, I, have, I have no take on that. Yeah, yeah. Because so, I, mean, I know some some coaches in the past that like would rather most of your stuff be coming from us, you know, not why. I'm just, I'm just saying what they said. I'm yeah, not I saying I have no idea. I'm just why. saying that. I, I think, think it will control. I yeah. think that the athlete always knows, you know, who the coach is, you know, and for an athlete to not to only want to learn from one individual, and that's kind of short sighted. I think the amount that you can learn from anybody that you encounter or come across, uh, excellent. Now, you may not enjoy working with them, so you don't, but. If you enjoy working with them, you can learn something from them. You should try to learn as much as you can for as many people as possible. Well, I mean, I think that his unique talent is the is yes. I think I think Marvin is a, is an elite player. I think Rebecca is an elite player. I think Julian's an elite player. I think we keep going on this list over and over and over again. Uh, but I think that what makes these guys so elite is the way they prepare, the way they work, the way they do the extra things outside the allotted time, uh, the way they study film, the way they live. I mean, I think that everything they do plays a part in what you see on Saturday. Um, we, I feel like those questions are, you know, thinking it's just all God-given and like, 
he didn't work for everything he got. Like he he had, he has literally worked for everything that he has, and uh, and that's the level at which you see for him, for Mecca, for Julian, all these guys are going down that that path. Uh, it has not been given to them. Uh, they have earned it. Yeah, and I mean, I don't special talent though. Talent is given. His skill development is off the charts well, because of the amount of work that he's playing. That may be the best comment I was getting at. Mm -hmm. Is that his unique The fact that he has the talent, but he does that in addition to it, above and beyond. Yeah, he does a pretty good job with it. I mean, I think we have guys out there right now in the field catching jugs, and you didn't name any of those guys just now. So I think it's a combination of that. I think it's, um, you know, the ability for one guy to maximize himself. You, as much as you want to work really hard, if you don't have that ceiling, you can't reach that ceiling. So that is a blessing, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think we have a lot of great players um, in that receiver room, and Marvin is being one of them. Remember long ago? Remember long ago when you were a player? Uh, when you were just running routes in the, in the winter or summer and things like that, catching balls from whoever the quarterback was, just trying to stay tuned. Were you always playing scenarios in your head, or you know, you weren't just going out there running an app? Right. I mean, explain, explain what kind of yeah. good, good mind tricks you can play. Well, I just, I just think every time you're doing a rep, you're putting yourself in a potential live rep. I think that you know, you're always mimicking an actual game movement. You're always replicating. A scenario or whatever, like whether you're, you know, keeping your toes in on the on the driveway and falling the grass to catch the ball, yeah. or whether you're, you know, on a sideline catching the ball, you know, who's it against and what's the what's the technique? You know, there's always that ghost that you're going against. Yeah. And I think the guys are playing the game constantly when on their field, and I think that's really critical. I think just going out there going through the emotions is one thing. But going with the motions with intent is a whole nother. Do you see it manifest itself in, with Marvin, for example, just Marvin, for example, in games where it looks like almost like he's been in that situation before the way he either made a move or made a catch? Or I think all of them try to replicate that, that scenario and, uh, and try to uh, put themselves in the situation uh, to replicate it on Saturday.